won't be able to find a publisher in Pakistan. So I'll go to Islamabad and sit down on the street and wait until Mr. Khan takes this book from my hand. When he reads it, he will become a human. He is not a human. He is a Muslim. As I told you, there are no Muslim humans. There are no Hindu humans. There are no Jewish humans. There are no Christian humans. And there are no Buddha humans. But there is the human. When he reads this book, as I said, he will become a human. He will go to the Pakistan parliament and say, don't send your children to Lashkar Daiba. I don't want them to become Osama bin Laden. Rather, plan to dream in their minds that they too can become... Suborno Isaac Bari, known as God of Mathematics. I came to Columbia University not to pray in the wrong room with your own hand, but to criticize the policies on Kashmir. By revoking the special status of the Kashmir, India gave Pakistan a chance to use Kashmir as a political pawn. I came here to tell Mr. Modi to restore Article 370 immediately. And I came here to tell Mr. Khan to stop using Kashmir as a political pawn. When I look at the world, from Syria to Palestine, from Burma to Kashmir, uh, I hear cries and torture, and I see the tears and blood of oppressed people. I know my speech won't be able to change the behavior of Mr. Khan or Mr. Modi, but it will give the people of Kashmir hope. It will give them strength. But most importantly, it will give the people of Kashmir a strategy. A strategy to turn Kashmir from a political pawn to the lighthouse of the world. It will turn terrorists to scientists. I think I was born in an American Muslim family. But I am not going to give this speech as an American citizen, nor will I give it as a Muslim, but I will give it as a human being. Because my identity as a human is larger than my identity as a Muslim. When I was four, my dad told me a story that his grandpa, Harun or Rashid, told him when he was four. Harun told my father that Harun's father's name was Malafi Abdul Hadi. Hadi was an imam in a local mosque. Hadi's father was converted from Hinduism to Islam. So that means my great 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 grandfather was Hindu. So if I were to give this speech as a Muslim, I would be biased to Islam, which would be an insult to my great 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 grandfather since he was Hindu. This is one of the reasons why I'm going to give this speech just like my father. In 2007, my father went to India for the first time to launch his book ceremony at Park Hotel. Dr. Muhammad Yunus came as a chief guest to the ceremony. At the ceremony, my father revealed that his great great grandfather, as I just told you, was Hindu. That evening, a Muslim man angrily knocked on his door. And when he opened, the Muslim man screamed, Never, never tell anyone your relationship with Hindus, because Hindus are kafir, and their religion is fake. My father was so shaken upon listening to this hate-based ideology that he couldn't sleep for the next five days. What I learned from my father is you can never insult any, yes, any religion, including Hinduism. This is another one of the reasons why I'm giving this speech just like my father is a human being. Mr. Murthy and his party BJP thought that by removing Article 370, they corrected historic blunder, but they actually killed the historic fact. I agree with what Amar just said. By removing Article 370, Prime Minister Modi destroyed India's reputation as the largest democratic country on earth. As a student of history, let me remind you all the facts. In the first millennium, Kashmir was the hub of Buddha and Hindus. Then, in 1200, the Muslims started pilgrimage to 
has me. A million of Buddhas and Hindus were, were converted to Islam under the rule of Mir Sayyid. In 1340, Muslims started ruling Kashmir. Then, by 1440, 90%, yes, 9 out of 10 people in Kashmir were Muslim. The Samir dynasty started ruling uh, after 1440, from 1440 to 1586, or 146 years. Gosh, that is well over a century. Then Mughal Emperor, aka Emperor Akbar, defeated the Samir dynasty and they ruled from 1586 to 1800, a whopping two centuries and 14 years. And then the government became so corrupt that even Muslims were supporting something called the Sikh Revolt. Did, uh, allowed Sikh to take over Kashmir. Anandan Singh uh, started ruling from 1800 to 1846 due to the support. Uh, finally, the British defeated Radhajit Singh and they uh, ruled for just uh, over a century from 1846 to 1947. Soon as the British started ruling, they put it together Jammu and Kashmir into one weird piece of land. Then in 1941, just before Hitler was about to unleash his deadly terror, especially in Europe, the British conducted a census. That census revealed that uh, the Muslims, the per population of uh, the, their new like piece of land, when they merged Jammu and Kashmir, I don't know what to call it. When they merged Jammu and Kashmir, that piece of land was comprised of 77% Muslim population, 20% Buddha population, I mean 20% Hindu population, Three percent Buddha population. Man, Kashmir is a sliver of what, of what it was back then, isn't it? 1947, um, the, uh, when the British realized they lost their policing power to America, they uh, they freed all the British colonies around the world, including the ones in India. <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi wanted to keep uh, India together, but uh, someone named Muhammad Ali Dina wanted to tear it apart. Muhammad Ali Dina won the argument and got to tear uh, India apart according to Islam. The non-Islam part uh, turned into Hindustan, or another name for India. Uh, and, uh, the Islam part turned into Pakistan. But ever since the 1941 census that the British conducted, Pakistan pretended that uh, Kashmir was part of Pakistan. Kash Kashmir, however, decided to stay independent, and Pakistan did not like that. So on October 22, 1947, they sent past two militias to capture Kashmir in, in an effort to capture it. They terrorized its capital, Srinagar, but it, they didn't succeed. However, the people of Kashmir did not like this aggressive behavior of Pakistan, so they decided to call help from India. India agreed, but only under one condition. The Kashmir would join India as a state. Kashmir also gave its own cash. The India would allow Kashmir to exercise autonomy over everything except foreign affairs. They agreed, and Article 370 was created and added to the Indian Constitution. Mm -hmm. Indian army started entering 
Pakistan who could kick out any Pashto militias in the area. As a result, the first Indo-Pakistan war began. The war broke out between two newly independent countries, India and Pakistan. India won, but ever since Pakistan lost, it has been using a different strategy to try and capture Kashmir, terrorism. If Pakistan is just a little teeny bit of world patience, uh, on 1947, the Kashmir might have even joined Pakistan, or it might have remained as an independent country. But due to some violent tactics to pressure Kashmir against any such possibility, they touched of Kashmir joining Pakistan. What did the decision to remove Article 370 to the huge security clampdown? But it's dangerous and wrong. In the future, Pakistan will use this opportunity to mislead the uneducated Kashmiris and trick them into taking revenge against India. They're using terrorist attacks, much like the ones they did in February, but killed over 40 Indian soldiers. Uh, however, that Kashmir should never use her terrorism to defeat Mithilji because doing so would allow Pakistan to use Kashmir as a political pawn. If they really want to take revenge, Kashmir should uh, uh, divorce with two evils, Pakistan and violence, and they should embrace education, especially math and science. And now I want to talk to my brothers and sisters in Kashmir as directly as I possibly can. Give up terrorism. Stop sending your children to Lashkar Taiba to receive Taliban training. You do not need to make your children Osama bin Laden. Rather, uh, make a uh, plant a dream in the mind of your child that they can become Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Then they will at least become APJ Abdul Kalam, if not Newton or Einstein. If we start nurturing our children, from today, in 20 years, we will have at least 5,000 APJ Abdul Kalams in Kashmir. If we do that, then Kashmir will not only become the lighthouse of India, but become the lighthouse of the world. I decided to publish this book in India for Mr. Modi, because Mr. Modi is not a human. He is a Hindu. There is no Hindu human. There is no Buddha human. There is no Christian human. There are no Jewish humans, there are no Muslim humans, but there is the human. Once Mr. Modi reads this book, he will become the human. He will become a true human. He will go to Lok Sabha and say, as a Hindu, I love all, uh, I love Hinduism. I also love all other religions, including Islam. He will also go to Vinan Sabha and he will say, uh, I am a, as a Hindu, I love celebrating Durga Puja. I also love celebrating all other religious holidays, such as Eid. I know I won't be able to find a publisher in Pakistan, so I'll go to Islamabad and sit down on the street and wait until Mr. Khan takes this book from my hand. Once he reads it, he will become a human. He is not a human. He is a Muslim. As I told you, there are no Muslim humans. There are no Hindu humans. There are no Jewish humans. There are no Christian humans. And there are no Buddha humans. But there is the human. Once you read this book, as I said, he will become a human. He will go to the Pakistan parliament and say, don't send your children to Lashkar Daiba. I don't want them to become Osama bin Laden. Rather, plant a dream in their minds that they too can become as Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. And they will at least become APJ Abdul Kalam. He will also say, I will stop supplying bombs to Kashmir and start supplying books. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.